In 1977, Australian cricket was torn apart. Media mogul Kerry Packer sensed players' frustrations with the game's administrators and formed a breakaway competition that lured the world's best cricketers, World Series Cricket. In a sense, Lily's predicament as a cricketer in the 1970s is what World Series cricket is all about. It's because of people like the two chapels, Doug Walters, Dennis particularly, were sitting there seeing all these crowds full and we were getting $200 a test match. They couldn't figure out where all this money was going. It's virtually a semi-professional type of game. Playing cricket alone is just not good enough, especially if you've got a family. He is among the first signatories to World Series cricket because he feels so strongly about the way in which the game failed to look after him in the early 70s. From a monetary point of view, World Series cricket uh, had to happen. It did happen, and I think the game's been better for it. It was a start in the right direction. Coloured gear, night cricket, coloured balls, the whole thing. I shuddered to think where the game had been now if it hadn't been for World Series cricket. In his two years and 14 super tests in World Series cricket, Dennis Lilly took 67 wickets. None would count in his overall career statistics, however. If it wasn't for World Series cricket, where that became unofficial tests uh, that they played in, in which he got 70-odd test wickets, I'm sure he would have been the first to cross the 400 wicket mark. In 1979, the two forms of the game reunited and Dennis Lilly was back playing test cricket for Australia, now one of the veterans of a young and promising team. He was just one of those guys that just dragged you along, just his, his personality and, and his performance level. He just dragged everyone along with him, and uh, so it was great to be part of that, particularly as a young player. 